There's a difference between feeling guilty and um, self-punishing about our actions that may have caused soul damage to our children or someone else. Between, because that's a very um, static place. We just beat ourselves up and feel really terrible and oh, we've done something wrong. Um, where in actual fact, the more freeing thing, there will be some more of compensation as we open our soul emotionally. We'll, we'll feel and release that. But um, to get underneath that, I'm, I'm not sure I'm explaining it very well. But yes. the law of, remember, the law of compensation is the result of you taking actions that are disharmonious with love and having a penalty upon your own soul. Right? And then there's a law of compensation effect. And remember, I've also talked to you about how repentance is the way past law of compensation. So when you feel deep feelings of sorrow in yourself for doing something uh, that was actually wrong in God's eyes and you've recognised it, then God's love or God's grace can come and you'll feel the change in you about that issue. You'll no longer cry about it. Now that's what I'd call a feeling of repentance. And the feeling of repentance is totally different than a feeling of guilt. Guilt is often imagined and guilt is often created by childhood events. So what's happening with yourself, for example, is you're in this cycle of guilt. You can't get out of guilt. Guilt is a fear and, and so you're in this cycle of fear, really. And you can't get out of it. That is not the same as the law of compensation and that is not the same as repentance. Because true repentance results in immediate cleansing or immediate re response from God. You follow me? True repentance actually causes an immediate action upon the soul from God's love entering it. So therefore you won't cycle over guilt all over and over, over and over and over and over and over again. Guilt is something that covers a deeper emotion. And it usually is a deeper emotion we don't want to feel. And in your case, the emotion you don't want to feel is the emotion of how unloved you have been from your father. And instead of feeling that emotion, which is going to be quite a, like, it's going to have a lot of different parts to it when you feel it. Instead of feeling that emotion, you prefer guilt. Because guilt means you don't have to feel that emotion. Does that make sense? Guilt means you can try harder to not feel that emotion. Yeah. And the, uh, the reason I cover it is because he was beautiful. And I had a really good upbringing. I don't want to... I feel guilty every time I think of that. You mean your dad was beautiful? Yeah, and so even though he yelled at me. Yep. Even though he yelled at me, I still feel, every time I get to that point, I feel guilty for thinking that he does something wrong to me. Well, the truth is he did do something wrong to you. And the truth is he wasn't beautiful. Now, I know that sounds quite blunt, but a, but a, but a parent who's yelling at a child constantly to control them, is a very unloving parent. Now they may think they're loving and they may look beautiful, but there's some major issues in the parent doing that to a child. So, so that is not loving and that's not beautiful. And you don't want to face that. You don't want to say that to yourself. Because if you say that to yourself, all of these emotions will be unlocked inside of you that you don't want to feel. And a very good uh, book to read um, as parents but also uh, with children to read, is called Toxic Parents. And uh, now, do you remember James who was a writer in that? You'll be able to find it on the net. It's called Toxic Parents, Healing the Shame of Childhood something, Trauma or something like that. But we'll bring the title on tomorrow with us. But that book was written, I think in the 60s or 70s, by a, by a woman who was very bluntly truthful. It's a really good book to read because what it does is it exposes a lot of our false beliefs about parents being good or bad and uh, what actually connotate, you know, what actually is unloving behaviour to a child and that's why it's such a good book to read. Um, it's a very confronting book if, you've dealt, if you have got sexual abuse issues or violent abuse issues in the family, you'll find it quite confronting but it's a very good book to read and what it does is it exposes the emotions behind why parents do things and uh, and tries to break the definitions of whether mum has been good or bad um, and, and get down to the, at an emotional level. So many of you want to hold on to a belief 
that your parents were good. The reason why you want to hold on to that belief is because inside of you, you have some emotions that will be unlocked if you no longer believe that. You see what I'm saying? So the addiction is, I want to believe mum and dad are good. I want to believe mum and dad were loving. I want to believe mum and dad were fantastic with me. I want to believe they did everything they could. I want to believe. And the reason why we want to believe all of these things is because underneath all of that is a lot of hurt that we felt when we were children. That if we don't believe those so-called truths that we've written in our mind, we will then start feeling these emotions. And if we do that, then we feel out of control. So we go into control, wanting to believe things about our parents that are not true. It's okay to say, my parent was abusive to me. My parent yelled at me. They might have stopped doing it. They might even be a great person now, and they may be, even be sorry about it now. But that doesn't change the fact that it happened, and I need to connect to that emotional. Does that make sense? And 